Y'all ready? All right, Genesis chapter 1. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to capture some of this here today. If you were in the Bible study on Thursday, you've already heard uh, some of this, but we'll see where the Lord takes me. Genesis chapter 1. Hallelujah. Been just sharing this and sharing this. And it's just been getting bigger and bigger and exploding on the inside of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I missing anything? Did I forget to do something real quick? Nobody? All right. Praise the Lord. Genesis 1. 1. Genesis 1. 1. Glory to God. Now forgive me if I don't stay on my notes because I don't really take notes. But I have a bunch of scriptures, references that I, I need to look back at. So, But Genesis 1 and 1, you there? So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everybody say amen. So in the beginning, God created heaven, heaven, excuse me, the heavens and the earth. So who was the creator? God is the creator. What did he create? The heavens with the nets and earth. Amen. Powerful, powerful. So. You, you didn't just find yourself here. You just didn't, whoops, somehow, some way, we made it to the top of the ladder. <laughs> that doesn't, that's not so, right? Now, verse 2, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 3, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen? So in the beginning, God created. He created the heavens and earth. Now, I got it. Just a simple question. Don't look, at, don't look at nothing else. Just simple question. Let's just think about this. God, the creator, creates heaven, the heavens, okay, multiple heavens. Obviously, you know, Paul talked about the, being into the third heaven. Yeah, I think it was Paul talking about going into the third heaven. So there's three heavens, right, one, two, and three uh, atmospheres, basically atmospheres or places and so anyway, we're going to get into that. But he created those places, and he created the earth. Now, God being a creator, a designer, how do you think everything was when this wonderful, powerful, amazing design? Look at the mountains, right? I, I looked at the mountains. I was like, oh, my God. We drove through this one area, and it was like these huge boulders. I forget the name of it. They're just stacked on top of each other. It's like my, like my daughter described that God just took his hand and took a pocket of rocks, and he just dropped them. And where they fell, that's where they laid. Just big, round boulders. Beautiful. It's like, wow. Thinking, oh, my God, what an imagination, God, that you would just stack these rocks like you were just a little kid playing. Well, here you go. You know, I told my son, we all got out of the car taking pictures, like, wow. I told my son, I said, see, see, God is a rock collector too. <laughs> he loved it, man. It was awesome. But here's what I say. Now, when God did that, you look at that and go, okay, it's beautiful. Amen. If you took the mark of man off, off of the earth, what do you think it would look like? I mean, you know, all the trees they cut down, whatever. You know, we're not going to get into the eco stuff. But, I mean, the trees they cut down, the, you know, the houses they build, the concrete they lay, what would it look like? That's why we go to the hill country or we go places that people haven't been, you know. We hide out. You're like, oh, my God, look at the birds. Look at the, I mean, right, if you love God, you, you love the things that he created. And you look at all that and you go, it's beautiful. Have you ever looked at a horse that God designed and think, man, that's an ugly creature? I mean, I mean, come on, this, have you ever looked at that and go, man, that is just so wasted. It's so empty. It's so void. It's so nothing. Have you ever looked at a horse and go, it's just a mess. The hoof is on his head. The, you know, the tail is coming out the side. No, right? So that means what he designed and what he created was beautiful. So then when you look at verse 2, you understand that something is wrong when Verse 2, somebody, all right, I'll read it off my, no, the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. How is a God of the most beautiful creation look at this and say, I did that? Are y'all reading it now? The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. 
Can a God that designed something so amazing like a horse, I say a horse because I, I saw a bunch of them, I love them, I was like, wow, look at those horses, designed that. And he created heaven and earth. And then to say the earth was without form and void and darkness on the face of the deep. How is a God of light going to create darkness? Because darkness is the absence of light. So obviously, if you have a, a mind of understanding, you go, something ain't right. Something must have happened and took place for this beautiful created abode heaven and earth and everything in between, something must have taken place to bring the earth without a real form and void and darkness upon the face of its deep. Something took place. Y'all with me? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best, right? I'm, I'm looking at my clock here and this is this is what <laughs> Isaiah 14. I found it somewhere else, but I didn't write that scripture. It's in Revelation, but I'll read this one. Isaiah 14, quickly. Just started to uh, start to Isaiah 14. Brother, forgive me. Verse 12. Isaiah 14, 12. You ready? Say amen when you get there. Come on, we gotta we gotta run a little bit. Catch catch some people up. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, how you, you who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregations on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. Verse 15, yet you shall be brought down to shore to the lowest depths of the pit. Depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms? Verse 17, pay attention. Who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities. So there's your verse 1.5. Genesis 1, 1 1.5. And then you go to Genesis 1, 2. Revelation also talks about Satan being thrown into the earth. Jesus said, I saw Satan like lightning cast out of heaven. He was thrown out of his position. He was thrown out of his place. He was, he was, because... This right here, he was trying to go against God. He was trying to overthrow God. He was going to take his position of authority and overthrow God. How many know you can't defeat God? God cannot be defeated. Amen. He's all-powerful. You know, all-powerful meaning there is no power greater than God. Amen. There is nothing greater than God. No thing, no person, no being, nothing beyond the power of God. God is the almighty God, and he cannot be thrown down. Amen. And so Lucifer, as a fool, tried to overthrow God. And when he went up into that position, even the very action of coming against God, bam, in a moment, his position was stripped from him. In a moment, he had no power and no authority in the realm of heaven. Okay, now there's three heavens. So he was cast out of the third heaven. He had no position in the third heaven. He lost his place. He lost his position. Amen. And so when he was loosed from his position, he being a light bearer, the Bible says Lucifer, a light bearer. Okay. So when you are stripped of your position being the light bearer, who do you become? In essence, he is absent of God, and God is light. And when he was stripped from his place and stripped from his position, in a very moment, boom, he became darkness. And so that 
that was a part of him or had to do with him, the earth, obviously had something to do with him. He had his throne here. He had some form of position here also. When he came back to this place, darkness came to this place. God did not create the earth dark. No different than he did not create man dark. God did not design man to live in darkness. There are some creatures that he designed to be able to live or adapt to the darkness. Do you know that so? Have you ever seen an owl? The owl's got some big old eyes. And they can see in the dark. You, you can't see very well in the dark. You, your sight to see in the dark is very, very, very limited. You were not designed to live in darkness, walk in darkness, to abide in darkness by no means. So therefore, to be a man without God, you were not designed to be a man without God. You were not. Therefore, a man without God has no life. A man without God is dark. And that's all. Okay, now listen. Adam, so here, here's what God does. And I'm trying to get everything. I've taught this thing like seven times in the last, you know, two weeks. And I, and I see faces and I'm like, okay, let me, let me try to catch you up. So just bear with me, amen. And then it's my first day back here. Come on. I'm going to bust this thing open because what, what I'm talking to you about is the kingdom of God. I'm expressing to you, but i got to start somewhere so that you understand the fullness of what the kingdom of God is, what the kingdom of God is about. Amen? And so here we go. Uh, Genesis, go back to Genesis. Um, let's see, Genesis 1. Genesis 1, 26. Are you all with me? All right, come on. Get your will good in here. Genesis 1, 26. When you get there, say amen. All right. So let me, let me, let me real quick, let me re back up real quick. So the spirit of the Lord is hovering over the earth. Verse, ver, uh, verse 2, the spirit of the Lord hovering over the earth. Then verse 3, God said, light be or let there be light. So God loosed by his word. He loosed light by his word. And the Spirit of God was hovering over this dark, void, empty space, this, this blob, if you can, that had this Star War-like explosion take place. Man, I'm telling you, you get some of this, you look at movies and you go, oh, man, look at the devils telling the story. Come on, you go look at some sci-fi stuff and you're like, man, that, that's biblical. We don't even know. We look at it like, ooh, that's creepy, that's weird, it's in your Bible. You know, who do you think, where, who inspired some of that stuff? Amen. So here's the Holy Ghost on the earth. And he, in essence, he's hovering. The Bible says he's hovering. Maybe he's brooding over. He's, he's, he's all over the earth waiting for God to release him to transform the earth, waiting for God to give him the release to be loosed on the planet of darkness to turn it into a planet of life. Come on, have you ever felt like the Holy Ghost is hovering over your life? It's like everywhere you turn, somebody's watching me. Something's going on. And, you know, I don't know who, what, what's about to happen, but somebody is hovering over me, waiting for a moment to be loosed. Amen. That's what the Holy Ghost was doing. He was waiting for God to say, now, go, do it. And bam, he came, light be. And the light came by the Spirit of God, bringing the light of God, and the earth. The Bible says everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And then the Bible, oh man, I can go somewhere with this one, boy. I love Revelation. So then, 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 then Jesus said, if, uh, even the very rocks will cry out. Hold on, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. But even the rocks will cry out. Come on, the earth is alive. All of creation groans and utters 
waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. I know I'm going far. Some of you are like, wait a minute, I've got to catch me up, Pastor. It's too late. Stay, stay place close. The whole earth is a living being that God designed. It doesn't look like you, but it has blood like you. Has a core like you. You know the earth's core is on fire. What's your core like? <laughs> oh, it's going to be a duck service. <laughs> See, the only thing that keeps the planet <laughs> from becoming a ball of ice <laughs> outside of the sun that glows on it is this molten lava on the inside. You see, you know what's amazing is every time there's, there's a season, all of a sudden the earth starts shaking and it cracks, molten lava just spews out. And what happens when that, now y'all got me on fire now. What happens when that molten lava begins to spew out of the earth? It changes the landscape. It creates new lands. It burns up old stuff when it starts to spew out of the earth. And we got some volcanoes that are capped. Boy, I go around, I want to uncap a volcano. Just let it out. Let it out. Stop capping it, man. That's the devil. Want to cap people. Want to hold people back. Want to take people back where they came from. Sleeping giants. Jesus, boy, I can't fire it up. I don't know about you. <laughs> Where are we? Where are we? <laughs> yeah, see, so the earth was a, as a living being. It's in motion. Can you imagine if the earth stopped spinning or stopped doing what it was designed to do? We would all die. God said, don't be without motion. Always be on the move with God. As soon as your life becomes stagnant, you start to die. If the earth were to stop, we'd all die. Our life depends on the earth's movements, seasons, and cycles of the planet. See, now y'all took me somewhere else, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, I did say have your way, Lord. <laughs> see, see, you see. So here, 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 Satan turns this planet into a mess, into a wilderness, the Bible says. A mess turns it in, turns it inside out, upside down. That that was right is now wrong, and that that had life is now dead. Why? Because he came. He was, he was cut from his position, and he was cast down into the place that he had some sort of authority. Now, I'm, I'm very cautious in that area because I don't know all of that answer, and as I believe God begins to reveal more and more, I'll express it. But he had a throne here. If he had a throne here, a throne meaning a seat of authority, he had a seat in the earth. And so he was cast back into his place of authority, losing his connection with God, losing his place in the heavens, and he became darkness. So that darkness touched the planet, and it became wasteland. Is that all right? Are we still in the Bible? Okay. We're not in Star Wars, but we're still in the Bible. So now God says, light be, let me bring life back to the thing that I created. Isn't that powerful? God does not lose. Uh, I'll give you one because some people are still stuck on the earth. The earth is a being. See, if the earth wasn't a being, why, did, why didn't he? Okay. Y'all, don't, 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 don't hate me. If the earth was not a being, why did God have to baptize it? Yeah. 
And if the earth wasn't a being that he created, that he loved and created, why does he say I'm going to baptize it with fire? And what does he call your life? From darkness to light, he baptizes you in water, and then he expects you to be baptized with fire later if you don't get it after the water. Come on now. A whole lot of resemblances in the Bible of God's creation. I find it amazing to see his design and his way of doing things shows up in your life. Where are we? Lord Jesus. So now the planet is a mess, but the Holy Spirit is waiting for the word of God. Spirit means breath. Breath is life. And the Spirit gave life back to the planet and then started to restore that that was a wasteland. Every time God spoke, the Spirit began to do that and to restore that which was lost. Come on. The Holy Ghost restored by the Word of God that which was lost. Now listen to that. That which was lost, the Spirit of God, that which was lost, the Spirit of God did what the Word of God was saying and brought it back to life. Then God said, now hold on now. Now that this whole thing is full circle and life is there, we need to, we need to put a, a, let me just say it easy like this, a manager in there. We need to put a manager on our behalf to manage this planet so we don't lose it to Satan. So he says, what better way to manage it than to put a man who is created in our image and on our likeness, just like us. And I'm going to do one better, that, see, because we got to understand authority comes. You don't have an authority in my house because you're not from my house. You don't have any authority or right in my home because you're not a part of my home. Come on, hear me. Right? If you walk in my house and I didn't give you right, I tell you, get out. If you don't get out, I'm going to call the authorities to come get you out because you have no right in my home. So the man had to have right in the planet. He couldn't be, he couldn't be of the Spirit of God and have authority here without having a right to be here. His right was his flesh. Oh, listen, man. Oh, my God. We're going to bust this over deep, deep, deep. The authority of the man was his flesh. Yeah, it was. Because without that flesh, he had no right to be on the planet. So God said, let us make man in our image. The flesh wasn't the image of man. The flesh was the authority and the right of the man to be God on the earth. Now hear me now. I'm I'm, I'm preaching real good now. I'm going to take all that religious stuff and it's going to go, and then you're going to find your place and go, wow, this is great. See, God has not changed. And really, when, when, when Lucifer fell out and did what he did, he ain't changed either. He's still a deceiver. He's still a liar. He's still a destroyer. He hasn't changed. Huh? Steal, kill, destroy. Steal, kill, destroy. Steal, kill, destroy. That's, that's, his, that's his thing. How does he do it? Deception, lies. Huh? Smoke, mirrors, magic. Magic. Smoke, mirrors. Let make you believe this. Make you think that. Help you here. Smoke, mirrors. Because he can't defeat you on common ground. Spirit to spirit, he can't defeat you. Man, when spirit to spirit line up, he can't defeat you. So he smoke and mirrors all the time. Lies and deceptions. Is this all right? I'm looking at your eyes. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. So where were we, Lord? <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I made man. He said, I made man in our image, in our likeness, for his purpose. 
But see, the amazing thing, let me hit you here, brother. See, the amazing thing about God's purpose, your, your life for him, his purpose for you, even though his purpose for you is for him, there's no greater purpose for your life but for him. The greatest purpose Adam had was to live for God. Period. He found his life in the purpose of God. That's what we're supposed to find. And in purpose of God is the best life we could ever live. Because outside of that is darkness. All right. Now let's go back here. So he takes the dust of the ground, the earth, the authority, and he puts it and he makes a man. Mankind. He creates and designed mankind. But mankind was nothing without God because he was still He's still empty, just laying there on the ground. It wasn't until God, the Bible says, God breathed. Oh, let me do that one more time because somebody needs a breath. <laughs> somebody needs the Holy Ghost to breathe on him, right? Woo. And he became a living being or a living soul. He came alive. It was the breath of God that brought Adam to life. So here's what's so interesting. It was his flesh that gave him the authority to be on the planet. To be God to the planet. See, God in him, right? When God breathed into him, who did he put in him? A subculture? Oh, Jesus. Oh, my. A substitute? No, not a substitute teacher. He put himself... As the real authority in the man on the earth with flesh so that he couldn't get kicked off the planet. It's all right. It wasn't a subculture. It was the real culture. It was the real deal that he put there, the real true God. Is that okay? Put himself in the man. Adam. Man of the earth. Man, flesh man. His authority was his flesh. So isn't it amazing what the devil used today to destroy the man? Flesh. What does the enemy use to destroy the man or the mankind? Is flesh. Paul said, die to the flesh. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, if you walk in the spirit, die to that thing. Why? Because just as Satan turned the world inside out and upside down. Now here comes Adam who's right side up and the world is right. Everything's right now. But the serpent, the snake, Satan is still in the earth, which is no problem for Adam. Because he's not a problem for God. Right? Right? So he's not a problem for Adam. Satan is not a problem for Adam. It's not like, oh, my God, it's, it's the snake. Oh, my God, it's the devil. What are we going to do? No, it wasn't like that. God had given Adam a word, a decree to follow just like the spirit follows the word. A decree, the, the spirit man was supposed to follow the decree of God. So the only way to defeat the man was to get him off of what God said. If the devil can get Adam off of what God said and a turn his focus to something else, he got him. So what does he start? He starts with the woman. Now, that doesn't make the woman a bad person by no means. Don't hate on a woman. Please don't. They're not the problem. No, they're not. In reality, it was Adam that was the problem. It wasn't his wife, Eve. It's because he didn't have the guts to stand up for what God said. <laughs> y'all sure y'all want to come back Saturday night? <laughs> we just kicking it open, brother. See, it wasn't the woman. It was she ate, she did, and nothing happened. Nothing happened. But it was the man who participated, then everything took place, right? 
It was the man who participated. It all went to. Okay. That's the safest way to say it. It all just went. Okay. So here's Adam, God in the earth. Can you say that without, without biting your tongue? It's, it's, okay, it's okay to say that Adam was God in the earth. Is that okay? Right? Oh, we can't compare ourselves to God. No, he compared himself to you. Came in and changed your life. Came in and choo, stuck himself in you. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all be all right. All right. <laughs> so, so here's God in the earth, Adam, and now here's this dark, empty being coming and telling this light. Now, now, oh, watch this. Now you got the real light bearer. And you got the one that used to be the light bearer. Now he's dark. Talking to the light. Telling the light. Well, you don't have everything. Isn't that crazy? Here's the dark spirit called Satan talking to the man, God man, Adam, telling him, well, God left some things out in you. You really? Are you sure you're like God? See, it wasn't a question of being like God. It was a question. He said, no, hold on. You don't understand me. I am God here. Now, what if you told the devil that when he walked into your home? And he says, well, you know, I don't know if God's with you. You know what you say? I am God here. Uh, some of y'all scared on that one. <laughs> well, we don't want to compare ourselves to God. Now, what happens if you look the devil square in the eye and tell him, I am God here? That's what Adam should have said. Wait a minute. Hold on. What do you mean God left some things out? He put, he, I am God here. This is my garden. What are you doing in my house? Listen to me, you nasty devils, whatever, serpent, five-legged lizard, whatever you want to call him. This is my house. Get out. And don't you be talking to my wife either. Don't talk to my wife. In fact, don't talk to my children. Don't talk to my birds. Don't talk to my cows. Don't talk to my chickens. Leave my horses alone. Get off my trees. Get out of my plants. Don't even try to touch my river, my gold, my silver. Can you imagine what it would have been like if Adam would have... Manned up and told the devil who he really was. Oh, this is. <laughs> I preach myself happy already, y'all. <laughs> I can, <laughs> yeah, but you know, so, you know, just a simple question of what he really believed. Just the thought of believing that God left him out. He said, well, maybe you're right. Let me do that. Bam. All of a sudden, darkness hit him. Oh, my God, we're naked. What happened to us? Darkness took hold in a moment. But thank God for his goodness and his grace, huh? See, sometimes we got to catch on to God's goodness, catch on to his grace. So Adam was naked, and he took off and hid. God come looking for him. You can't hide. It's okay. Let God find you. There's some folks in here missing. God, God going to find them. Don't worry about it. <laughs> he going to find them. Let God find them. It's good. God said, come here. I got to come here. Where you at? You know? And the quicker I believe Adam would have jumped and ran into the arms of God, I believe sin would have not set hold. See, what made it so difficult is Adam waited and waited and waited and waited and waited. God had to call him and 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 call him. Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Pick up the phone, boy. Where are you? I'm calling you. Don't, don't, don't hide so long. I believe if he would have jumped up and answered the call, God could have turned it all right then and there. I'm telling you, that's how fast God works. Right then and there, he could have turned it. Bam! And then we, we wouldn't have had to 
you know, fight our flesh. Right? I mean, if your flesh is your authority, see, isn't it a spirit without a body has no right to be here? Anything that does is becomes witchcraft, necromancy, talking to the dead, which is illegal in the laws of God. Why is it illegal? Because they don't have a legal right. Amen? And so it was the flesh, the, this thing right here. Come on, somebody slap your knee. It's a knee slapper right here. This thing right here is the authority, the right on the earth. And so what Adam did, I mean, yeah, what Adam did when he, when he bought into that lie and took it and said, well, you're right, you know, however that took place, boom, darkness came, he lost his place, and now the flesh became against him. The flesh became against him. Amen? The devil turned him inside out. Inside out. So that that was right is now wrong, and that is wrong is now right. And that was faith is now fear, and that what was fear is now faith. And everything shifted. Everything turned inside out. Just like the earth. When he got a hold of the earth, he came, fell in here, boom, it just shifted. You ever wonder why they find, she, you know, now listen, pay attention. Listen to this, okay, hear it clearly. Why do they find seashells at the highest mountain? And most people say, well, Noah's flood. And I ask you. From honest, think right. Don't try to be religious and biblical. <laughs> you know, religious, not, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, it's the flood. Okay, have you ever been outside and washed rocks up your driveway with the water hose? Come on, some of y'all don't have driveways? <laughs> well, I believe God, by the end of this year, you'll have a driveway. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you ever try with a power water hose and wash rocks uphill? They all tend to go. And I wonder how did a flood that water came from up and below take a whole bunch of seashells and put them on top of the mountain? Shouldn't they all be washed in the valleys? I'm just, I'm just saying. Just washed in the valley. So, you know, it's interesting that King David, who had an, an understanding, and he said the very stars, the very vast darkness that he saw, he said that is a curtain to heaven. So all God had to do was look through. That's what David, that's how David, David was powerful in Revelation. You go read some of his Psalms, and he said, where the world was turned inside out. The mountains became the valleys, and the valleys became the mountains. I ask you, is it when Noah's flood that the mountains became the valleys and the valleys became the mountains? Ooh. Just a question. Just a simple question. Should really shake some things to the core to make you, what do you really believe? What do you really know is truth? See, because it is that truth that sets you free. That that you know of the things of God makes you free. Amen? Hey, all right. <laughs> Y'all having fun? Are you getting something? See, okay. So you're still here like, what are we talking about? We're talking about a lot of things. But what I'm talking to you about is the kingdom of God. See, what God did was establish the authority on the earth, mankind, to bring forth the kingdom of God on the earth. His purpose was that the kingdom of God be established in the earth, or can I say restored. Anybody work at a restore? I, mean, I know, I know, I'm just messing with it. <laughs> but to replenish, to restore that that was lost. So what was lost was the kingdom of God was lost on the earth. God's rule and reign on planet earth was lost in Genesis 1, verse 2. Pow. 
God. So he says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, because I shall not lose what belongs to me. Even though Satan stole it, took it, he said, I'll put a man in there. He'll get it back. So what does he do? He creates a garden, a place, a refuge. See, see, this is where, where I deal with. I could see in your mind, you, you, some of you are getting it, some of you are not. But if you were born and raised in a place without a republic or without a democratic system or however you, if you were raised in a place without that and you were raised in a place where there was one king and one queen, you would understand. But because we vote and we do all that, we don't understand really a lot of the Bible. We don't understand a lot of the Bible because the Bible is not a voting system. It's not a voting system. It's a kingdom. The king's domain. There is one king. He's King Jesus. And there is a domain. And underneath that one king are set up kings, which is you and me when you're born again. So let me back up a little bit. God established his kingdom on the earth by one man named Adam. Now it's interesting that God in his word says that he planted a garden. Now I say, was the whole earth restored? Doesn't really say. He said he caused these things to begin to take place. The birds, the water, all this. But he planted a specific place for man. A garden. One spot. In fact, it was one area of property. Am I right? Right? Remember when, when Adam sinned, the angels had to come up and keep him out with flaming swords. What were they keeping him out of? The earth? No, they were keeping him out of a garden that God designed for him to live in, which the tree of life was in. Y'all walking with me? All right. I don't wanna, uh, I'm trying to get somewhere before that good click, click, click. I take authority over time. So God designed this garden for Adam to live in, and everything was in that garden. Didn't he say? Here's the trees for you to eat from. Here's this, here's that, here's the water, here's the gold, here's the silver, here's the onyx, here's the sapphire, here's all the money, and it's in your garden. Everything you'll ever need is in your garden, Adam. Just take care of your garden and tend it and replenish the earth. All right? Amen? I'm looking in your eye. I want to make sure you're on the same page. That garden he created was Adam's kingdom. He was supposed to take his kingdom beyond the borders of the garden that God created. You with me? Boy, I know this is deep. Boy, when you stop eating, I can't give you no more. Okay. Okay. So, Boy, I got to give you exactly what you need. So, so Adam's, the garden that God created was his domain, was his domain, was Adam's domain. And if he was a king, it was Adam's domain. What is a king's domain is a king's kingdom. So Adam's kingdom was that garden, and it was his responsibility to keep and tend that garden and cause it to grow and produce and take over the whole entire planet and keep going beyond the planet Earth, but everything in the heavens. I'm going to let that sit. Heavens. Heavens. What did God lose? What was lost was the domain of God, the, the places that God created and designed for life were lost to Satan. God comes back in there, makes a man, 
to restore all that, bring it back to him because he had the rightful authority. God's domain was everything. But obviously, Lucifer or Satan had something, some throne, some position in the earth. Listen, he's the prince in the power of the air. What air is that? Heavens. Sin reached from earth into heaven. Heaven was affected when Satan fell, when Adam sinned. Everything was affected in between. All right. Well, this is very important to your life. This is very important for you to understand. See, because I hear. Satan is all about religion and deception. If I can keep you focused in on what religion you are and this, that, and the other and deceive you here and, you know, and not know that you are a king in a kingdom and God has planted you in a place uh, for your dominion so that he can come and go like he did in the garden. He want, he came and visited. Why did he didn't why didn't he stay? Why didn't he stay with Adam? Why didn't he come and hang out with Adam and just live with Adam? Oh boy, this is gonna be good. All right, I'm gonna work on finishing it up. So, is this good teach? Uh, you, you saw, I can see some of you just, I see God just busting a revelation in you. He couldn't live with Adam. He could only visit. Why is Jesus so important? Why is Jesus so important? He said, when you, when you accept me, me and my father, we will come live in you. He doesn't come and just visit you. He comes to live in you. See, that which was lost is now found. A place to live and dwell in my creation. God in you. He comes to live in you. I had to jump. I apologize. I had to just jump. Because some of y'all were falling asleep. Too much teaching for you. Ah. His. He got a Oh, boy, man. We're like 50 roads right here. I'm going to take the right one, Lord. So Adam's domain, his kingdom, he gave over to Satan, and he become subject to the God of this world now. How does Satan become the God of this world if Adam was the God of this world? I'll ask you this. Is the God of heaven and earth your God? But before he was your God, who was your God? So at some point, there had to be a surrender, didn't they? At some point, there had to be a surrender that you are no longer God of your life, but that he becomes God of your life. There is a surrender. So if you backtrack, if you understand one thing, you can back up to understand another thing. How did Satan become God of this earth? Because Adam was God of this earth, and he surrendered to Satan, and Satan became God of this planet. Because he was no a God. He was not a God. He is not a God. Because God, Adam, gave over his lordship to him. So I ask you, who do you give your lordship over to? Who do you give your lordship over to? You, we choose. People choose every day. Who, who am I going to give my lordship over? Who's going to lord over me? The God of this planet, Satan, or the God of heaven and earth, Jesus. See, now what happens is now there's two kingdoms. 
the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness. And there's a, in essence, there's a war over your choice. Which one you, 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 are you going to choose to live by? And what's, what's in the middle of that is your flesh, your mind, your will, emotion, your flesh. One, you have to die to your flesh to enter in. The other is all about your flesh. That's why I got a problem with a church that is all about how you feel. Because that really concerns me when it's about how you feel when that's the area that Satan loves to destroy you in. I'm just concerned about that. All right. <laughs> Some of y'all look like y'all from Kalinga. They've been off for a month. That's what's going on. I'm going to stoke the fire in you. <laughs> so it's so powerful that when you sung that song, brother, Jesus said he, they, the disciples, they saw some other kingdom in Christ Jesus. They saw a different kingdom in Jesus, and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to be like you. Show us how you do what you do, how you are who you are. He said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. He said, you have to allow the kingdom of God to come on your life, come in your life, and you'll see the will of God. Wherever the will of God is not in your life, the kingdom is not there. Uh, where's my amen corner? I got to stand in my amen corner because some of y'all like, blah, 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 blah. let me say it again. Wherever the will of God is not being done in your life, it's because the kingdom of God is not established in that area. We are ambassadors of Christ, Right? We are ambassadors of Christ. When we take somebody from America and put them in another country to represent America, we build a place for them. We go and we take our things and we build a house for them. We build a office for them. We build what we call a... Uh, a who? Oh, you mean an Eden? We build them an Eden that they can live in so that the kingdom of America is established in that vicinity. Oh, my God, I feel it about to rain. And he says, the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous run in and are safe. If you're in another country and you're an American and you are being chased, persecuted, you run into that embassy and the Marines will slam the door. And they'll shoot anybody trying to come in after you. The kingdom of heaven. You run into the kingdom and the angels of God stand guard. Ready to defeat the devil on your behalf. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hey, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> See, it was, it's all, everything is about God's kingdom on earth. Jesus restored it. I'm, I'm going to finish it. We're going to have to set this on next Saturday. <laughs> Can I give you one scripture? Just get, let me give you one scripture. I'm going to prove something to you real quick. God, where is this? Abukurakashi. Let me find this real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Four days I scratched the surface on this. Four days I preached this, scratched the surface. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where you at? Come on. Mm, 
there it is. Matthew 4, 23. <laughs> thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Well, I feel like a release is about to hit this place. A refreshing. Some of y'all been fighting the devil a whole month long. But I'm telling you, you're about to slip into the kingdom and the angel of the Lord, bam, about to kick the devil. I can see it happening. Matthew chapter 4. Oh, my, 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 my. Uh, <laughs> Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, watch. Oh, this is amazing. Powerful. <laughs> Mark, or Matthew 4, 23, and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He didn't preach a religion. He didn't preach a tradition. He did not preach the Judea, forgive me, I'm not being disrespectful, but the Judeo things. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. He didn't preach a Jewish gospel. Oh, let me wreck some stuff real quick. He didn't preach no Jewish gospel. He preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. There's a huge movement right now. Very dangerous because it crosses a line if you go too far. I'm warning you, some of you, my folks, you, you cross a line, you go too far, you get right back into the law and you get right back into bondage and that spirit of freedom. Huh? leaves you and you become bound up to some you know how do you say the name of Jesus let me tell you how Jesus I'm telling you it's because I've seen more devils flee and more devils run out in the name of Jesus if it wasn't his name they didn't have to bow to it all right that's all I'm gonna go on that one that's, uh, that one's free. Watch it. I'm not disrespecting, you know, the names of God and, and all that. That's beautiful. Learn more about that. But when you change some things, you are walking on dangerous ground. Verse 23, Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. What was taking place? <laughs> it, was a revival. Amen. it was a reviving of the kingdom of God. Now the goodness, goodness of God was being revealed to mankind because they hadn't, they're very rarely seen such goodness established like that. And so when Jesus was preaching, the kingdom began to manifest that which was lost, that which was stolen, that that is broken, that that is missing, that that is empty, that that is lonely. The kingdom began to come forth while he was preaching. And it's not, he, he like, oh, just get up, you're healed. Sickness began to leave. Demons began to go. Why? Because he was releasing the dominion of God on the earth. So sickness had to go. Why? Because it's from the devil. And so as Jesus is preaching and he's releasing the kingdom of God, boom, boom, I mean, boom, he's releasing. He's taking words from heaven just like when God spoke in the beginning and he was releasing them in the earth and then the Holy Ghost would just take that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the Holy Ghost, sister. I mean, he's just hitting you. Oh. Praise the Lord, I'll get a new one. <laughs> That's what was happening. And as he's releasing the word of heaven, demons were leaving. Sickness was leaving. He healed all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. The Bible, there was more scripture that says, and demons were leaving. They even ran up into him and said, we know who you are. Holy one of Israel. You are the whole, you are that anointed one that we had heard our 
Father Satan talk about was coming. Are you here to torment me before my time? And they had to leave. How, how is it? Because the kingdom of God was being manifested right there. He was not preaching a tradition. He was speaking of God, the true and living God, and he was taking dominion. Why? Because he came in the flesh. Now, some of you Bible studies, you know, you know there's a scripture that says, test and try the spirit. Make, if an angel appears to you, look him in the eye and say, Declare that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. I said, why? Why do you have to say, why does the, the spirit, if it's of God, have to say that Jesus came in the flesh? Because he understood that flesh gave him legal right on the earth to die for you and me. And the devil will never say, yeah, yeah, he had legal right to come die for you and me. No, he's a deceiver and a liar. He can't say it. Because then he would be preaching the gospel. Oh, my God. Come on, come on. Come on, stand up. I'm done. The de- you would cause the devil to preach the gospel if he said, well, Jesus came in the flesh. Isn't that powerful? Oh, my God. Father, we bless you. Oh, my. Oh, it's raining in here. (laughs) It's raining in here. Come on, somebody better catch the rain.